welcome to this week's Monument Monday and um, we are in Creevy Keel this week. Creevy Keel is in North Sligo and it's a very fine court tomb and we are joined by Martin Byrne today. Um, Martin is a guide at Carol Moore Megalithic Cemetery and Mark, Martin is also local to the Cliffany area and he's going to tell us about this monument uh, which is one of Ireland's finest court tombs. So tell us Martin what exactly is a court tomb? Hi uh, Tamlin, how are you? Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, a court tomb is one of the four type of megalithic monuments we have in Ireland. So the most common ones would be passage tombs and court tombs. And they seem to be called court tombs because you find you have this very large open courtyard area which is usually outside the entrance to the chamber. Yeah. So they seem to be designed for some kind of ritual gatherings like maybe large groups of people or I sometimes suspect animals as well quite possibly. It always remind me of a cattle pen when I'm in here. Yeah, and this is, it's a kind of an oval shape. Yeah. Um, it's, they used to call them lobster claw cairns because it's kind of shaped like a lobster claw. So you have the passage in the chamber here behind us yeah. and you have this very, very large courtyard. This one here is about 25 metres, I think it is, um, 25 by 12, I think. And yeah. then you have an entrance which is leading out on mm -hmm. the east side as well. So a gathering place really ceremonial gathering place. So this was an open air gathering place and then off that were two chambers which are here. Yes. So this would be the main chamber, the main entrance into the monument and you can see the portal or the doorway here or the entrance and these well matched jams which they like to talk about a lot in archaeology <laughs> and you can also see actually there's a lot of iron in the stones here in Creevikil as well. You see these red marks that's actually um, iron content in the stones. So this doorway leads into the chamber and this is a double chamber. There's two rooms in that chamber. Great, great. And and the best way really to view this would be to understand the shape of it would be with an aerial image. Oh, we have an aerial photograph. I bought one here to show you. And, and this will give you an idea of the lobster claw shape of the monument. And in this one, I've removed the wall as well, which was built in 1935 from around the monument to make it look a bit more natural. Yeah. And in the 1930s, there was extensive excavations here Yes. Now you could say that this is one of the first, this is the first court cairn to be excavated in Connacht and it is the first, one of the first scientifically excavated monuments in Ireland because these monuments were um, excavated in 1935, this monument, sorry, uh, by a group of archaeologists from Harvard University in America who came over here and they did 10 excavations in Ireland um, in a four year, five year period and this is one of the big ones they did. So they were here for I think six weeks at the end of the summer in 1935. And did they find any interesting artefacts? They found quite a lot of interesting things here. For example, at the entrance to the chamber and at the entrance to the court outside here, they found an axe head buried in each entrance. Um, they found a flint knife here. They found quite a lot of pottery and one of the pieces of pottery was cardial ware, which was um, quite common on the continent about 6,000 years ago. So a very interesting piece of pottery here, but quite a lot more pottery apart from that. Quite a lot of pieces of quartz. Um, this monument was reused in later times, so there were bits of glass, bits of bottles, bits of things like that found as well. Quite a yeah. lot of artifacts and bones as well. Animal bones mostly, very few human bones found here. Were there burials or <clears throat> cremations? They talk about um, there being four pits found inside the chamber, but they talk about minimal, very, very tiny amount of human remains being found in those pits so not not even I think enough for a full body but then when you read other reports you hear that there was four cremations found here so it's hard to say for sure yeah yeah and and there were the monument was used in the medieval period and we have um, evidence of that which was excavated in the 1930s as well so Indeed. we might just take a look at that Martin I will for sure so what you have here is um, an early, or it's a medieval or an early Christian smelting pit and when they excavated it here I think they found something like 70 pounds of um, slag iron here and that's what's so interesting about seeing the colouring of the iron in the rocks and you'll see there's a few rocks around the court here as well which have this red stain in them and that is actually iron content and that is the reason why they have their smelting pit here is because there was iron available in this area. So you can see this is where the furnace was here for the for the heat and then this was some kind of a flue which came out and you can see that they altered the stones in the courtyard as well and they pulled this stone out to make an entrance out through here and I'll just step over here for a second 
the stone here is very interesting because you can see that there were chisel marks were and holes drilled in it and this is possibly associated with this early Christian use. Some people suggest that there was some kind of a maybe a leather kind of a cover or some kind of a clue to draw the, the, the fumes or the smoke out of here. Very interesting. So we're going to take a look now within the chambers and you can tell us a little bit more about the monument there. chamber now of the tomb and you can see the portal entrance that we came through and looking through there is the court and the remains of that smelting furnace there and I'll just have a look be behind me here and this is a second chamber so these were burial chambers that were roofed with a corbel design and then over the top of that was a cairn and we have the remnants of the cairn on the outside and we will take a look at that when we go around the outside of the monument. Um, Martin you were telling me an interesting story about this lintel stone here. Yes when this monument was excavated in 1935 this lintel stone was found lying down here in the chamber and the archaeologists had to lift it out of the chamber to excavate the ground in here, inside the chamber. Now the local people at the time all said to them, that's not the way the stone was originally. That stone used to stand upright. And the archaeologists in, the 19, in 1935, um, Henkland, didn't believe them. But we have found an old drawing of this monument from the Wakeman collection. And this is a picture of the capstone here in Creevy Keel, and the date is 1880. And you can see that the capstone was standing upright at that time so we're looking from the back of the chamber out towards the front of the monument which is which is where we are now so yeah. what happened to this monument was in 1895 three local brothers who got bored came down here one day and they pushed over this capstone which had been standing for the guts of 5,000 years uh -huh. into the chamber so it lay in the chamber here for about 40 years and now since 1935 it has been sitting back flat like this on the top but we can see from this drawing that originally it stood upright and it must have been very very impressive yeah and and i mean like this is a pretty heavy stone for three people to push over would would you hazard a guess as to i think it would be easy enough to push it over because okay. when you look at it you can see it's a lot heavier on the top than it is on the bottom ah. so it would have been quite narrow and it was quite tall so i would imagine it was easy enough for them to do it so it's almost a wedge a wedge shape yeah and quite a bit of damage happened at that time the lintels were pushed over in um, deer park um around a yeah. little bit later than that as well but they were pushed over deliberately as well as the vandalism and quite a few in Donegal as well actually what a shame so so where it is now would have been the original position for it where it is now, it's lying flat where it is now. Originally it would have been standing upright, so it would have been much more imposing. And in Wakesman's drawing, he tells us that the top of the stone was nine feet above the floor of the chamber. Oh, right. Very interesting. Mm. And you said you have brought many people around this and there have been many to bang their heads on it going yes. through. It's, it's funny, you know, it's funny, but when you're coming in, you come under the stone now and you've got to come under about five feet of this lintel. And just at the point when you think it's safe to stand up, that's when you want to duck because there's a kind of vicious lip here, which is in this drawing of Wakeman's, and that's what always catches people on the head. So anybody who is coming to Creevy Keel, just be very careful entering the chamber because you can get a bad bang in your head off this. And I, I appreciate the warning before, before I came in. Thanks, Martin. We'll go around the outside and we'll look at the two additional chambers that are built into the cairn and, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll take a look at those. Sure. We're outside the monument now and we are going to take a look at some of these subsidiary chambers and here's one in front of us here and was this a later insertion into the monument Martin? Well Creevy Keel seems to be a multi-period monument or it seems to have had several extensions take place here so these chambers may have been added at a later time there's one here in front of us yeah. and that's backing onto another one on the other side of the chamber 
and you also have a third one just over here as well. So they may be later insertions, but they are quite common to find in cork cairns. You will usually find one or two of them. I think three is possibly quite a lot to find. But the monument itself was extended several times and you can actually see that when you look at the edge of it here you can see there's some stones out here and you can see there's some big boulders on the inside as well so when you walk around the outside of it you will see that there there are extensions on this monument or it was made bigger over time yeah and and i mean we're looking at something is it late neolithic that's generally the period that court tombs were in use or I'm not 100% sure anymore because a lot of this stuff is changing quite rapidly but they seem to, the passage grave people and the court tomb people seem to be arriving here roughly around the same time. They seem to be fairly contemporaneous with each other and it's like two major megalithic traditions that we have in this county I suppose. So roughly I suppose around 5,500 years ago but there hasn't been any material from here dated so we couldn't say for sure. And court tombs are mainly, mainly have a northern distribution, Mayo, Sligo, Donegal. Yes, there's about four, I think there's about 400 of them in the country. And I think all of those, all of them are found north of a line from Galway to Dublin. I think there's maybe five of them south of that line. That's very interesting. Mm. And, and you'll hear as we're speaking, there's a road right behind us. Yeah. So um, this monument is actually very convenient. And um, one of the things that is happening with with increased uh, visitors is that people are leaving behind um, offerings so we're going to go and take a look at those now we're here now at the entrance to the monument and you can see the court tomb there behind me and then what we've got on the trees all the way into the entrance Martin are these rags and there's absolutely loads of them can you tell me what what is going on here well, as far as I know, this is not an old tradition at Creevy Keel. This started about five years ago. And um, there is a tradition of rag trees at Holy Wells and at various places mm. like that. But we believe ourselves that this is something that um, it's a modern tradition, maybe, that has been started by somebody and has taken off because it's such a convenient site for people to visit. It's easy to come to. And when people see something like this, uh, they tend to, I suppose, mimic it or copy it. But I do know the original idea of a rag tree is it's kind of like you're leaving an offering or a prayer and that as whatever you leave on the tree dissolves, your prayer is kind of like a slow release tea bag almost is diffused <laughs> into the atmosphere. I think that's the original idea behind it. Yeah. But this is a new phenomenon here at Creevy Keel. And you can find anything here. I mean, you'll find plastic bags, you'll find underwear. <laughs> Sometimes you'll find money. <laughs> but um, it's generally quite dirty stuff. Yeah, yeah. And... Um... Like this doesn't seem to be a tradition that's going to end anytime soon. I mean, when you look at how many are on just behind you there. Yeah. Well, we, um, actually, we cleaned the place two years ago and within two weeks it was gone back to this. So I think it's passing traffic. But you can see there's plenty of. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so this is really interesting that this kind of um, souvenir leaving, yeah. leaving something of yourself behind Absolutely. at a place. And I think people feel the need to do that absolutely um, and in some respects it's better than graffiti it's a bit easier to clean up anyway i suppose absolutely yeah yeah that's very interesting and uh, i just want to thank you for today um it was a really interesting and such an amazing site and thank you very much for showing us around you're welcome thank you for having me